Hello and welcome back to the show where you get to see the transfers that you have missed called On The Outside. Coming up, we'll be discussing Brighton's new interest in acquisition from RB Salzburg. We'll be looking at what's gone wrong in La Liga. We're going to see how Inter Milan have already spent the £50 million they got for Hakimi. We'll see what Colombian striker has been given a chance in Germany. And we'll see why AS Monaco will push PSG next season. And after all of that, we're going to have a look at a team from Ukraine who could be the one to watch in Europe next year. The Premier League. Enoch Mwepu has drawn Brighton from RB Salzburg for around £20 million. Now Mwepu uh, joined Salzburg a few months after Pats and Daka did, they both came from Zambia and last season from central midfield slash right midfield he scored 5 and assisted 1 although he should have assisted a lot more, it was just his teammates not finishing. He should be a pretty good box to box midfielder for Brighton. Nathan Collins has joined Burnley for £12 million, he's joined from Stoke and uh, he's six foot four at 20 years old, really makes some good passes as well so this is definitely a good purchase from Burnley. Michael Elise has joined Crystal Palace from Reading. That's a great transfer. He was one of the best creators in the championship last season. And at 19, this is a perfect transfer for the future. Patrick Vieira will be absolutely delighted with this move. Finally, Southampton have brought in Romain Paroud from Stade Brest in Ligue 1. Now, Paroud is a 23-year-old left-back and he was one of the best attacking left-backs in France last season. I mean, look at his assist numbers. So, Southampton have really replaced Ryan Bertrand well, who's on his way to Leicester. La Liga! We discussed Rodrigo de Paul last time, but Atletico Madrid have also brought in Marcos Paulo from Fluminense, a 20-year-old Brazilian winger who didn't really get too many goals or assists last season, but nonetheless it'll be interesting to see what Madrid do with him. Barcelona are falling apart and that's it. Interestingly, La Liga has been the lowest spending uh, top five league by a country mile. And really, if you take away Rodrigo de Paul's transfer, but I think La Liga have only spent about 60 million pounds. Serie A. We only have to report on the Milan clubs this week as uh, Inter Milan, as I mentioned, have spent the Hakimi money really well. Uh, they have brought in um, Matteo Darmian for £2.5 million. <laughs> Elsewhere in Milan, Sandro Tonali has made his move permanent uh, from Brescia to AC. Now, he was on loan there last season at Milan and he made 17 starts. He's only 20 years old, but um, he's been touted as really as the next Pirlo. He needs to up his defensive work rate, but uh, it's interesting to see Milan have really got a good signing for the future. Bundesliga! With the avalanche of activity we had to cover in Germany in the last episode, you would have think they would have slowed down, but phew, absolutely not. RB Leipzig have brought in another fantastic transfer in Andre Silva from Frankfurt. Now, the 25-year-old striker scored 28 goals in just 32 starts at the Bundesliga last season. Basically, he was better than Erling Haaland and only just behind Robert Lewandowski. He had a 24% goal conversion, which is 7% better than Harry Kane. And at £20 million, this is, this is unreal business. So Leipzig could actually push by in next year. Wolfsburg have also brought in Yun Xiang Hong um, from Pohang Steelers in Korea. I only mention this because uh, the last uh, young Korean winger to come out of the Bundesliga was uh, Son Hyung Min. So um, maybe Wolfsburg have got a gem on their hands. Rafael Santos Bore has made the move from River Plate to Frankfurt on a free transfer. Now he spent the last couple of years in Argentina, he actually moved to Atletico Madrid when he was a lot younger uh, and Diego Simeone said he just really wasn't ready for the move but the talent and the potential was clear to see. Now Rafael Santos Borri, he, he had a modest goal scoring return last year in Argentina so it's going to be interesting to see what he does in the Bundesliga as for the 25 year old this is really his last chance to make it in Europe. Kevin Prince Boateng is uh, he's dead of old age, no um, I'm only joking but the answer is actually more unbelievable than that. Uh, Kevin Prince Boateng has not retired, he has moved to Hertha Berlin on a free transfer. I was also shocked to find out he's only 34 years old. Finally in the Bundesliga you have to keep an eye on Dejan Lubicic, uh, he's moved from Rapid Vienna to FC Köln. he won 63% of his ground duels in uh, Austria last season so for a 23 year old defensive midfielder I I'm quite interested to see how he does. Ligan. In Ligan there has been an ocean of activity, mainly from PSG who we won't cover and Marseille. Now we covered their move of uh, Gerson coming in but they've made a few other moves as well actually they brought in Matteo Guendouzi and William Saliba in on loan they brought in uh, Islam Ismaili Balerdi from Dortmund and um, they've also brought in Paolo Lopez in from Roma who was um, 
celebrated with one of the worst goalies in Europe last year. So that's not a good move, but anyway. Now, Monaco have had a bit of business. They've brought in 21-year-old Ismail Jakobs from FC Köln. Now, he only scored and assisted two goals in Germany last season. So for a 21-year-old winger, that's not really a good return. But Monaco scouting is much better than my own. So let's have a look at it. Elsewhere, as I just started recording this video, uh, GFFN reported that um, Monaco were looking to get in mile on board and were thought to be leading the race. So if they get the RZ Alkmaar striker in, brilliant business. Monaco have also brought in Alexander Nubel on loan from Bayern Munich. Now he excelled at Schalke a couple of years ago, forcing Bayern to bring him in as Manuel Neuer's eventual replacement, but Nubel's just seen no minutes. So a loan to Monaco is really interesting. Finally, Rennes have brought in Loic Bade from uh, RC Lons uh, in Ligue 1. Now, He's arrived for about £15 million, a 21-year-old centre-back, and he was really one of the standout defenders in Ligue 1 last season, and his debut campaign in the top flight, so Ren have really got a good sign in here, who they'll probably flip a massive profit on in the future. The rest of the world! Now, to round it off, I actually want to go east to Russia and Ukraine. See, Russia actually have one of the fastest growing football leagues in the world, and they're beginning to spend the money quite well. For example, Ruben Kazanov brought in Sayed Haksabanovic uh, from Sweden. Now, in his last 34 league games, he has scored 7 and assisted 15 from the wing, uh, 22 year old. So, really good return, and uh, he's either going to strengthen the league or Ruben Kazan going to flip a massive profit on him. Russia have also seen players like Victor Moses and uh, Victoria Angaban move in, who are, you know, strong squad players. Then there's Ukraine. Now, after a successful Euro 2020 campaign, I'm kind of surprised not more attention has been paid on them. And that's especially true for Shakhtar Donetsk. Now, they've brought in a new manager, Roberto De Zerbi, who was the manager of Sassuolo last season, I think before that. Basically, he plays really good football and he's partly responsible for the explosion of Dominica Baradi and Manuel Locatelli. Now he's moved to Shakhtar and he's taken some interesting players with him including 25 year old Brazilian defender Marlon who played for Sassuolo last season. They've also brought in Pedrinho from Benfica which we covered last year. He's a Brazilian winger who's been hyped for a long time but didn't really do well in Portugal last year. And finally they've brought in Lacina Traore from Ajax for £9 million. He's a wonder kid who's been touted for success for a long time and while I personally don't completely rate him. I really admire the ambition from Shakhtar. That's all from me today. Hopefully you learned something and uh, I'll see you next time.